Hallelujah. Happy Sunday to us all. We appreciate the name of the Lord for keeping us um, to the last, starting to the last Sunday in the month of February 2021. Um, his name be praised forever in Jesus' name. And uh, today, by the grace of God, we will be concluding the topic we started last week on the message titled My Place of Wilderness Experience. So, we are taking part two today. And um, so, majorly, our topic of to for today is understanding the features of the devil's temptations. Understanding the features of the devil's temptations. Our main focus uh, will be on the test, the first test that we used last week, and which is Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. Um, we want to uh, go into, into details, into the three temptations that the devil used in approaching the Lord Jesus at the wilderness so for us to be able to understand how the devil operates and for us to also be able to overcome his temptation that the Lord Jesus did. Let us pray. Excellent Jehovah, we appreciate you for the gift of life. Thank you for counting us worthy to be among those that will see today. We appreciate you. Thank you for how you helped us last week when we considered the first part of this message. We bless your name for making today a reality that we can conclude the second part. Glory be to your name in Jesus' name. We pray that, O oh God, as we continue, you speak to us yourself and help our lives so that we will not remain the same. Thank you because you have answered. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So by the grace of God, like I said, we are um, con concluding the message today. Uh, but then to start with, I want us to know that, like many preachers have, have made us to understand that there are ne several names, many names that we can call the devil. But there's one important name we cannot call him. We can never call the devil a fool. Because the devil knows what he's doing. He's the person that he plans all that he does very well. He knows what he wants to achieve and is never tired of um, getting his plans fulfilled. That is why if you, you can call the devil a liar, you can call him um, a deceiver, you can call him several things, but then you can never call the devil a fool because he knows what is his wise, he's very cunning and he knows what he is doing and he wants to and how to even achieve his goals. And for instance, all of us remember what happened in uh, the Garden of Eden that are talking about Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 to 19 when he approached um, Eve and that was the first woman and God created and that was the first the, the wife of um, the first man that God also created that's talking about Adam and the devil knew what he wanted to achieve by approaching Eve and then he cunningly he deceived Eve and eventually that led to and that break of relationship and between the Almighty God and the first man that he created um, so that means that from that time, from that time, the devil has skillfully been planning his tricks to ensure that he breaks the relationship between God and man. And that is why, as Christians, we must try as much as God gives us the grace to be able to, you know, equip ourselves well, so that any time the devil approaches, we'll be able to overcome all his tricks and all and his situations that he brings our way. And I pray God will help us to be able to achieve this in Jesus' name. And at the same time, uh, like I told us earlier, that today uh, we are concluding the message and the, other last, the topic that started last week, which is my place of various experience. And so today our focus majorly will be on those three temptations. So we want to consider those three temptations in details and for us to be able to know how the devil operates better and then to be able to overcome all these tricks. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Um, as first, we, the first temptation, and we can see that in verse 3 of that text, that's Matthew chapter 4, verse 3, and where he told the Lord Jesus, he said, he told God, he told the Lord Jesus to command, he command, he, he told the Lord Jesus to command this, the, the stones to be made bread. He told the Lord Jesus to command and the stones to be made bread. And of course, all of us, if we read from that verse 1 of that text, we will remember that in verse 2 precisely, that Jesus has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. So after fasting, like we all know, he was hungry. The Bible even confirmed it in that verse, that verse 2, that he was hungry. And so the devil knew that Jesus was hungry, and that was why the first temptation he brought and the way of our Lord Jesus Christ was to tempt him to turn the stones to bread. And similarly, the devil also knows what we desire. He knows what we are passionate about. He knows the state of our heart. He knows what we are eager to get. So that is why many times when he wants to tempt us, he will first, do, he will first analyze the state of our heart and then he will bring temptation in that manner. If what we want is let's say money, he will bring temptation in the area of money. If what we are seeking at that time maybe it's a good job, temptation can come in that manner. 
And I pray that God will give us wisdom to be able to overcome all of his attentions and lies in Jesus' name. And of course, I, we can also remember the story of Esau talking about the twin brother of Jacob. He was hungry at, and that's in Genesis chapter 25, verse 29 to 34. He was hungry to the point of selling his bad right for food. The devil knew that this man was hungry and then he brought a uh, fruit his way. And of course, because Esau was hungry, he, he, he despised his bad right and in the process, he lost uh, the bad right that he regretted forever. I pray that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. And that thing we also need to uh, note and from this first temptation is the fact that um, from our last prayer, Matthew chapter 6, verse 11, um, it says, Give us this day our daily bread. God knows that we need um, our daily bread. He knows that we need to eat. He knows that we need uh, something to be able to take care of ourselves. And that's why the devil will always also tempt us in, in our efforts to make ends meet. As we try to get a good job, as we try to get promoted, as we try to achieve uh, some things to make to make ends meet. Devils will also tempt us in, in those areas. And for instance, we have had cases of people that um, maybe because they want to get a job and then they are already over age, they will go and first certificate just to ensure that they are fit and um, for that job they are applying for. So the devil in a way will always look for a way of tempting people, you know, in their way of uh, making ends meet just because that is one of his best tactics to use in getting people down. He uses it for the Lord Jesus but then it did not prevail. And I pray that we also uh, will overcome this trick of the devil in Jesus' name. A second temptation is seen in verse 6, in where he told the Lord Jesus to throw himself down, and then he tried to quote the scripture, but then he did that out of context. He was saying that God, uh, God has said that he will give his angels charge over us to keep us from falling. You know, the devil um, quoted that verse out of context, but then thank God that the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, had a better understanding of the scriptures. And then he told him in response that it has also been written that thou should not tempt the Lord thy God. So that means that as if Jesus Christ did not have a good understanding of the word of God, he might have well be falling into that temptation. So that's why as Christians, sometimes never we want to use our ignorance in the world of, of the word of God. We want to use our lack of depth in the word of God to tempt us away from the will of God. So that's why as Christians, we need to be good student of the word of God. That's why even in that book of Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, you know, the Bible encourages us, you know, to to be someone that, uh, uh, to be to be a good uh, student of the word of God. He says, study to show thyself approved. So that means as Christians, God expects that we we'll study these scriptures. In fact, even in the book of John chapter 1 verse, so John chapter 1 verse 8, John chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible encourages us to, you know, to to meditate on the word of God day and night so that we can what we can be prosperous. So brothers and sisters, if we don't want to fall into um, the devil's temptation, if we don't want to fall for all his tricks, we need to be good students of the word of God. We need to study the word of God because via it is in it is our is our is our um, prosperity and of course is our victory. At the same time, the Bible makes us understand in the book of Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, it says that my people are destroyed. Or lack of God gave us that understanding that if we don't have understanding, if we don't have knowledge, definitely, uh, even if we are tongue speaking Christians, no matter how much we pray and we don't have good understanding of the word of God, definitely the devil will be able to capture us. And I pray that that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. So, what we are saying in essence is that for us to overcome the devil tactics, for us to, be, to overcome all his tricks, we need to have a good understanding of the word of God. We need to know what God has said concerning th that situation in our lives. For instance, for someone looking for uh, the fruit of the womb, we need to know what God has written in his word concerning that, so that we will not fall for the devil's temptation, or into the devil's temptation. And then talking about the third temptation, we can see that in verse 9, it says that all these things that we give, the Bible makes us understand in the preceding verse, how the devil took Jesus to the top of uh, the pinnacle of uh, uh, to the pinnacle and then he showed him everything he showed him all that was in the world the devil knew that you know one of the things that one can do to capture someone is to entice the person so what he did was he was trying to use the, the things of this world of this world to entice the almighty G jesus christ he was using what even god himself created you know to tempt the lord jesus and but thank god that jesus christ was able to overcome that temptation and jesus told him that it has been written that thou shalt worship the lord and him only shall thou worship praise the lord so that means that as christians we need to be careful of 
what we desire. We should not have uncontrolled desire. Those things that we desire passionately, those things that we lust after, those things that we have a very you know, unrestrained longing for. You see that the devil will use those things to tempt us. And those things can naturally tempt us away from the will of God. And that's why the Bible makes us understand in that first, in the book of First Peter chapter five verse eight, he told us he warned us to be sober and what to be vigilant. Why? Because the devil that we we are we are dealing with is someone that does not rest. Is always looking for room to devour. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, he will not devour us or any member of our family and even our loved ones in Jesus' name. And in summary, uh, we just want us to understand from and uh, the verse, sorry the the part one and part two of this message that. The very, the very sure way to overcome the devil's temptation is for us to use the word of God. It's for us to use that which has been written in the word of God. And as, as Christians, we must ensure that the word of God, the word of Christ, dwell in us richly. Because that is the only way via which we can overcome all of the devil's temptation. And then we should also understand that as Christians, in our, in our wilderness experience, at those trying times that we are in, or that we may, fall, we may find ourselves in, the Holy Spirit is always with us. We should not forget the fact that God has promised to always be with us. He is our demand world, so He's always with us. So we are not to, you know, get ourselves confused or to to doubt if God is with us. God has told us is always with us. So in whatever the situation, in whatever the challenge or uh, challenges may be, we must have that assurance that God is with us and is on our side. On that thing, we should also note. From um, the message that uh, we have we have presented last week and that of today is the fact that the main goal of the devil's temptation is to make us doubt who we are in Christ, and that is why last week we mentioned that one of the things he told Jesus in two of the three temptations was that if you are the Son of God, where Jesus, um, whereas Jesus Christ Himself is the Son of God, you no, know, the devil wanted him to doubt his person. He wanted him to doubt who he was in Christ, in God rather. So that means that one, the major goal of the devil's temptation is for us to doubt who we are in Christ. He wants us to doubt all of those things that God has promised us. He wants us to doubt you know, that peace that God has assured us of. He wants us to doubt what God has told us in First and Peter chapter 2 verse 9, that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. He wants us to doubt all of these promises. That is why as Christians, we must remember that whenever the devil brings temptations our way, the devil wants us to doubt who we are in Christ. And that is why we need to use the word of God to overcome him. And that thing we also need to note from um, the message of today and that of last week is the fact that uh, we need to under have a good understanding of the features of the devil's temptations as we have explained um, today. That at first he, he will want to use those things that um uh, we want to use those things that actually interest us at that at at every point at that at every instance you know to tempt us at the same time we also want to play on our ignorance of the word of god we might also want to play on our understanding of the word of god and then lastly we might also want to also use our source of income or source our our, our effort to make ends meet in taking us away from the will of God. And I pray that in the name of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, um, that we always um, have our victory over him in Jesus' name. And that thing we need to also note from um, today's message and not of last week is that by the grace of God, Christ has died on the cross and Christ has given us all that we need to overcome him. And that is why as Christians, we must ensure that we fill ourselves with the word of God. We must be prayerful, um, study the word of God, and by so doing, we'll be able to overcome all of his tricks, all of his uh, strategies, his deceit. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, we will remain victorious in Jesus' name. And as we, uh, before we go uh, today, I want to encourage anyone that is yet um, to give us a life to the Lord Jesus. Now, the best time to do that is today, and uh, because tomorrow might just uh, be too late. Um, as we close, let's pray this prayer. Say, Father, please, by your mercy, help me to always overcome all the schemes and practice of the devil in every area of my life shall we pray. Eternal Jehovah, we thank you for your word today. We pray that in the name of Jesus, you give us the grace and to be able to overcome all the tactics, all the schemes, all that the devil will bring our way in the name of Jesus. We seek grace to remain overcomers in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for answering us and we appreciate it because we have done so. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I so want to appreciate you for and joining us again today to conclude this uh, message uh, of this part of Second Ambassadors is I believe that uh, God spent our lives 
and God's tarrying, and the Lord Jesus tarrying is coming. We'll meet again next week Sunday. And but before then, if you are yet to subscribe to our channel, we want to encourage you to do so. And then we'll meet again next Sunday if the Lord Jesus tarrying is coming. God bless you, and please have a wonderful week. Bye bye.